until the blue fairy shows up, so that's nature. So what I'm saying is that nature will cut kids a break. If you think of nature in the guise of, well, their mother, for example, but even the biology of other people. Because we're wired to accept behavior from children that we wouldn't accept from other people. So nature will forgive. So she shows up in her heavenly guise and says, what's going on? And Pinocchio, again, because he's naive, but also because he's not good. He's not evil either. He's, he's neither or both. It depends on how you look at it. And he also has no idea how smart he is and how smart he isn't or how smart the person he's talking to is. And uh, instead of admitting what he's done, he lies about it. And that's interesting because it does suggest that he understands at some level that he set himself up for this. Because, you know, he could just say, he could have just told the truth. This horrible fox kidnapped me and, and sold me to this, this slaveholder, which is true. It's a lot more true than the story he tells. He tells a story about some monster, you know, a fictional monster. He could have told even three quarters of the truth and had it work, but he doesn't. He just obscures the story entirely. And this is the part of the movie that people remember. His nose grows, right? And it, it grows to ridiculous length. And why is that? I think it was Mark Twain, Samuel Clemens, I think, who said, one of the advantages to telling the truth is that you don't have to remember what you said. And that, God, that's worth listening to because So there's a bunch of things I've learned as a clinician. And one of them is, because you're often in really weird situations with people if you're a clinician, because things happen that don't happen normally, and you don't know what to do. And so what I've learned is I just say, what, I just say what's happening, whatever it is, regardless of what it is. You know, I'll just try to describe it as accurately as I can and not worry about, in some sense, not worry about the consequences. If you're in a really, and I'm telling you, this can save your life at times, Especially if you're dealing with someone who's paranoid, who's really paranoid. You do not lie to someone who's paranoid and violent. Because as soon as you lie, you're aligned with the forces that are persecuting them. And they're going to be, because paranoia makes people hypervigilant, like they're on amphetamines. In fact, you can make people paranoid by giving them enough amphetamines. And you can make paranoid people more paranoid by giving them amphetamines. So they're hypervigilant because they feel that everything is predatory and against them. And so they're watching you like you would not believe, way more than you're watching them. And if you flicker a lie while you're talking to them, and they're really on the edge, you, you're done. So it's, it's one thing to really know, if you're ever in a really bad situation, and you don't know what to do, you tell the truth minimally, you don't disclose too much, that's just another lie. You tell the truth minimally, and carefully, and hopefully, and you might, get out of it. You might get out of it. But if you falsify it, look the hell out. So the truth is a real is a real mechanism of protection in dangerous situations. You know, so if someone's trying to intimidate you and you, you think they might get violent and they ask you if you're afraid, then you tell them that you're terrified and that you hope that things will go okay. It's a long lineup, like 50 people, and we got a I got about three from the front, there were still like 40 people behind me, and the guy behind the counter decided that he was just going to shut down the line and that we could all go to this other line, which was like 300 people long. And I suggested that he not do that, because we'd been standing there for half an hour, and that he could just deal with the 20 of us that were left and, and like, have a clue. And so he called the sheriff right away. And this was down in Florida, and it wasn't that long after 9-11. And so these guys came up and they were armed. And they came and said, looked at me, because of course he told them that I was causing trouble, which I wasn't. I was just trying to not let, what would you say, an arrogant bureaucratic scum rat take advantage of me. <laughs> so, which is not the same as causing trouble. So anyways, as soon as the cops came up, I said, look, I'm going to do exactly what you tell me to do right now, and I'm not going to cause any trouble. But I would like you to hear what actually happened. And so that, that's a good example of a situation like that. It's like, if someone's got you, no brava, bravado. It's a very bad idea. And I was going to do exactly what they told me, because, you know, they didn't know who I was. 
and I didn't know what they had been told. So anyhow, the problem with lying is that it's a hydra. And kids find this out very early, because you tell one lie, and what happens is it has one of the consequences that you expect, maybe you get away with it, but it has three or four others that you don't expect. And so it's like it grows some, some complexity. And then you have to tack a lie on each of those little complexity outcrops, and then they grow three more complexities, and soon this little lie turns into a great big ball of lies, and at some point it becomes painfully evident to everyone. And by that time, you're in such... You see this with politicians, like that guy who was sexting. Um, Anthony Weiner, yeah, perfect name for him, man. It's so funny. Uh, I, I shouldn't make that comment because it's so obvious, but it's still funny. But, you know, he... That's exactly what happened to him. It's like, it wasn't even so much the event, because... You know, people are stupid, they make mistakes, and actually, the public is somewhat forgiving if you say, yeah, geez, I'm a real moron, and you know, like, really, seriously, how could I do that? But I did, and like, I'll try not to do it again. They'll make an error, and it gets exposed, and then they make three others trying to cover it up. It happened with Nixon, for example, and then the whole thing just turns into a complete scandal. And maybe they could have got out of it at the beginning by just telling the truth. It's like, yes, I'm an idiot, you know, I'll try not to do it again. Well, that isn't what happens in this case, and Pinocchio grows this elaborate series of lies, and the fairy is willing to be a little generous to him, because he's little and cute, and he's still a puppet, and she tells him not to do that, and that she's going to give him a pass this time, but that she isn't going to be able to intervene on his behalf again. 